Morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Welcome to another uh, edition of the, the COVID series that we're doing here in the Pyrometrics Bunker. And we've got an extra person in the bunker with us today. So we've got everybody's tech support guru, Ray Gore, is joining us today to help with some stuff. So uh, because this is the non-Blondell, so it's going to get kind of crazy. These, these are the ones I like better, so it's a little chaos here. So we're going to be jumping around, going between the different you know, uh, cameras and everything. But uh, it's going to be chaos in here, but uh, we're, you know, we're just very happy to hear that uh, some of the things out there are starting to get, seems like we're starting to hear a little bit better news. And uh, so uh, that's good. Um, we know what the craziness has been, you know, we've had to deal with. Um, I, I've learned some stuff from this. I learned that I touched my face way more than I thought I did. We've talked about that. Some of, the, some of my buddies and I have talked about that. You have to make, force yourself not to do that. And I know the essential stuff. Essential is, the word essential means a little different to us now, doesn't it? I mean, what we considered essential before is different than what we consider now. I know, uh, I know for all the women, you got women in your lives. I mean, I know they're talking to you about nails, hair, all that stuff. I mean, it seemed a little bit more essential than it did before, right? So um, they're not like guys. We just go on with it. Stuff like that starts affecting us. So, uh, so here's what uh, here's what we got going today. Uh, we're once again we're in the series. We um, today's non Blondell stuff. So we're going to talk about non Blondell. Um, we've got uh, we're going to do. Uh, um, here's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to talk about Blondell a little bit. We're going to uh, talk about the theory some. Um, we're also we've got a, a 6SZ coil. We're going to uh, test one of those. Go over a little bit of the theory with the vectors and everything on that. We're also going to do a 5S, a uh, four-wire delta, where it gets kind of squirrely on that as well. Talk about the vectors a lot. And then we're going to finish out on the number one non-Blondell meter in the world, which is also the most popular meter in the world, a 2S. Okay, so we're going to cover all that today. So, um, so that's what we're going to go over today. This all this non-Blondell stuff. And uh, so we're going to start out talking about uh, just Blondell and some theory. And uh, so Chris is going to take over that. Hey everyone, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, what is Blondell's theory? You know, what does it have to honor? And what would be a violation of Blondell's theory? Uh, so what the heck is it? So by the letter of the law, Blondell's theorem is, if energy be supplied to any system, of conductors through n wires, the total power of the system is given by the algebraic sum of the readings of n watt meters. So arrange that each of the n wires contains one current coil, the corresponding voltage coil being connected between that wire and some common point. If this common point is on one of the n wires, the measurement may be made by the use of n minus one watt meters. What does that mean in English? Does anyone get, understand what the heck that means? So try to make it simplified. Let's think about it as if you have a voltage coil, you need to have a current coil to pair, it, pair with it. That's the N minus one. So if we have a four wire three phase system, we need to measure the power in three circuits. So in a four wire, I've got A, B, C, neutral, and right? N minus one, I take and remove my neutral. I have, a, I have an element for VA and an element for, v, uh, for IA, and it goes for both B and C. That's it, that's as simple as it is. Not really sure why we have to go through all that explanation, but that's basically what it is. If I've got an A element, I need to have a pair with it to make it work. Um, so with, with Blondell, um, interesting fact, you know, why, why did metering guys make this so complicated to begin with? Um, back in the days where, when electromechanical meters were around, um, engineers were trying to find a way to reduce cost. Um, we'll talk about the Z-Coil, that's a little bit unique where they actually removed the PT to save cost there, but in most cases on the meters, they would there was it was pretty expensive to have a three element meter so engineers try to figure out well if I had two elements um, and then I just did a uh, did a little bit of a rewiring in the meter itself maybe I could sum these two together and I could save a little bit of money on a meter that was their whole reason why they came up with this uh, 
violation, I'll call it, of, of Blondell's theorem. Before then, it was, it was always, you know, pretty understood. So, using Blondell's theorem, if the meter insulation meets this, where n minus 1, we get accurate power under all circumstances. If a meter system does not meet Blondell's theorem, then we only get it under when assumptions are met. So, what are those, uh, what are those assumptions? So, let's look at a, uh, uh, a 5S. A 5S delta. So I've got uh, it's two element meter. I've got three wires coming in, and I've got two elements, right? So I've got A, B, and a reference point, right? So um, so this this does satisfy Blondell's theorem because I've got two potentials that match up with two currents. Uh, notice that line one coming in it goes through the first CT and line three goes through this, the second CT commonly we'll call line one A and line three C. The, uh, and so this does satisfy Blondell's theorem. Now the next case, using the same exact meter I've, I've got, this is on a four wire Y. So think of this like a, this is typically you would use this surface type, you use a nine S meter, right? Cause I've got, I've got three currents, three potentials with a, with a, with a neutral reference. But in this case, uh, we, maybe we got a whole bunch of five S meter sockets. So it's like, well, you know, we can stick this on a four wire Y, but we got to make it a little bit difficult for the guy wiring up the service to reroute his uh, currents to the, to the CTs. So I've got four wires coming through, but I've only got two potentials that paired up. So I've got current coming through one, line one, current coming through line three, but I don't have anything coming through line two. I have to do a summation to get the uh, second phase, which is B phase, to measure through the two, through two CTs to get my current correct. So this does not satisfy Blondell's theorem. So again, we talk about the, those are the assumptions. Um, what happens when we do, when we get, what kind of errors do we get? So if we look at, think about the last example we had, we've got a two element meter and I have to shift my phases in time to be able to sum both the, uh, the, uh, the phase coming off of A and coming off of C. So I have to make an assumption for B phase. Okay. So if, if we look at this, stay with me here, it's a little bit of, of, of math going on, but um, so if you see how, how I'm making the assumption of phase B power, I'm taking the voltage B times times the current of B and a cosine of theta. That's a very common way to measure watts. But in this case, we're not measuring voltage B. So we have to make the assumption and you have to shift in time with your current times your voltage on cosine of theta and add the same thing up to half the other current to get this summation. So, next slide. The, uh, so we have to go through this, this math concept to prove out that we actually get this to work. So we have to assume that voltage for, for B is always going to equal the same amplitude for A and C. And we have to, again, shift our phase angles in time because remember our 4 hour Y, every single phase is 120 degree spacing. So we have to readjust that to compensate for the loss of a uh, of the second current. Notice we have to double the voltage to get the uh, to get the calculation to come out right. So again, in a perfect situation, well, let's say a normal situation. Let's say, so if you look at uh, my VA is 117 volts, my voltage B is 120, and my C phase 119, I have best case scenario error of 1.67 percent. That's at a virtually perfect 
scenario. Now the next example is, well, what if I shift my power factor 30 degrees, which is that 0.866, and, but I readjust my amplitudes up to something that's, that's fairly common among all three, I still get the same error. And the bad part about this, this always goes in the customer's favor. So right off the bat, you're starting with an error that could have been prevented if you just stuck a, 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 a non-S meter in this case. Um, so what we're going to do is John now is going to do an example uh, just running the test on a 6S meter. And notice that on a 6S meter, I've got two potentials but three currents. Obviously this is a non non-compliant Blondell uh, non-Blondell compliant service so we have to make the assumption of, of, of the B voltage because we have to half the current for A and C and you're going to notice that the vector diagram is going to look really bizarre uh, when we start running the test. Okay, take it over to John. Okay, so we have here a uh, 6S meter you can see right here. <coughs> socket's hot, we got the light on right here. So you can see where I've got my connections here, I've got my secondary volt, uh, excuse me, my secondary currents A, B, and C right here, right? Because <clears throat> remember on this test switch, if you've seen any of the previous um, of, the, of these uh, webinars we're doing, you've noticed it, it's a little bit odd test switch right here, we've got all of our returns are over here, and then we go uh, voltage and, and uh, shunts, voltage shunts. <clears throat> so I got all three of my duck bills are in here, A, B, C, you can see here I've got A and C voltages, and then over here you can see where I've got my, my B reference over here, okay? So if you come over here, you can see I've got a uh, 6S that I've set up in here. Remember, you always look in the upper right-hand corner of the screen where you can see what site you're on, and we've uh, created a site called 6S right here. So here's the menu for that. So I'm going to go ahead and run number two, which is the integrated site test. And you can see here, it's going to perform a customer load test on that meter, and that's, and that's it, right? So I'm going to hit next. Okay, so you can see here, uh, it's showing you, you've seen these before on the previous ones we've done, where it shows the green dots next to where you're supposed to make your connections here. So we're going to go next. When I finish the uh, when I finish the test, I'm going to go back out and show them connect view versus meter view. Okay, all right. So let's go here. Okay, so here we go. Uh, everything's looking good so far. We should recognize that. So we're going to hit continue F6. Like I've told you before on there, I wait for the second one. That's the, right, that's the way uh, Ray taught me. So we're going to go right here. All right. John, yes, sir. I just want to point out that your new hairstyle yes. is a hit. Is it really? Yes. What's new about my hairstyle? <laughs> <laughs> Before I forget, I was going to thank her at the end, by the way. Props out to Chiquilla for the braid job. <laughs> it's getting out of control, man. I cannot make an appointment with my hairdresser. All right. So we can see the test is complete at the bottom. We always see at the bottom there, test complete. And we got 100.129. So it falls within what we consider pass or fail that was set up in this machine that we always set up for you in the field. When you get a new kit, we'll set that up for you. And according to this, what they've set up, that is a pass for here, all right? But I want to go over something. Let's go back here to previous. All right. Let's go over to our vectors here. So you can see here, and I've, I've talked about this before, if I showed up out there, honestly, I would have probably done this the other way around. Um, I do whatever, you know, 
the director and the head of photography tell me. So when they tell me to run the test, I run the test. Now, if I'm in the field, I would probably, when I'm dealing with these type of service types, I want to kind of take a look at the vectors first. So if, before you run a test, you can look at the vectors and you can use this reference button, right, that we talked about. So I can use a reference button and I can hit it to see what that vector is supposed to look like. And that looks correct. Now we've got connect view. This is what most of my meter guys out there are saying, okay, now that's what I think of when I think of a 6S. This is just a four wire wire, but I don't have a, uh, a voltage on B phase, right? So it looks just like a four wire wire, but it just doesn't have that B phase voltage. Okay, and that's the difference between, because the, what the meter does internally is it sums A and C. But this is what it looks like, you know, and then I can go to meter view, and this is where the meter, where the meter's summing them up, right? That's why I have secondary current I, C, I, B. See where I've got them? So it's, it's doing a summation there. Okay, I wanted to make sure I saw that, or showed that rather. Sir? Ah. Uh, let's see. All right, so we got a pass on A phase. On B phase, we got a fail. And on C phase, we got a fail. Remember, we always say follow the red numbers to see why. So on B phase, we can see we've got a phase angle error there of 0.08. Now, what, I, what have I talked to you guys in the field about on this? This is probably a repositioning of my, uh, of my red flexes, OK? That's what we usually run into when you're out in the field and you're off a little bit. And that's why we have that gold box there so that you can go back up and retest just that phase. So I could adjust and play with my CT there a little bit and hit retest and retest just that one. Let's look at C phase here. C phase. C phase is saying that I'm out. Why? Because evidently whatever I've got set up is pass or fail on that CT in this kit. It's got to be less than, than, uh, than the 2.47%, right? So whatever this, this kit's set up for. Now, when I'm in the field, I usually set up for 3%. So anything below 3% is a pass. So on my test kit in the field that I use, this would have passed. But evidently on this test kit, it's not mine, they've got it set for tighter than that. Okay? So... So now we're going to talk about the 5S. All right, so the next one we're going to be doing, this is another uh, customer request. They had a uh, service type in the field where they have a 5S meter, but they've only got, uh, I'm sorry, they have a 5S meter and two CTs, but the actual load they're getting is a four wire delta. So if you remember from a four wire delta, we've got four wires. In minus one, it's bundle compliant, but here we've only got two elements to meter those four wires. So obviously it's, this is a non blondel compliant. So if you look at the power calculation, that's that P uh, or watts in this case. So you got the voltage at reference to neutral times the difference between the, t the phase A and phase B currents. And then you, then you add that times the product of two times the power of C phase to make sure that all the watts come out correctly. Uh, in the power master, you've got two different service types to be able to handle this. Um, the, uh, the one on the left, we're actually using two flex probes. And so C phase is okay. You could do a, but be, depending on which side of the CT you're on, you can use a, either a double wrap or you can use a single wrap going around the conductor going through C phase. Um, 
and then on the uh, B and A to sum both A and B coming into that second transformer, you've got to use a figure eight configuration. So you actually run the flex probe in a figure eight so you can capture the polarity of the uh, negative for B and the positive for A. So it sums together. Uh, the, uh, in this example, we're actually using the one on the, on the uh, right, which is using three flex probes. So we're, we are using a single wrap around A, single wrap around B, and a single wrap around A conductors going through that first transformer to add together to get our current sum of that second CT. So when you, when you actually run the test, you're going to see only two CT tests, but we're actually summing the uh, currents of A and B together. And so Ray will be uh, doing a, a live test on this. And do note that we had to simulate this, so we can't show much as far as the connections go. Um, but you'll be able to see how the vector diagram looks, how it should expect, and how the CT tests come out. Get over here. All right, guys. How's everybody doing? Welcome to the show. This is my first show, of course. But uh, hey, I am grateful to be here and grateful to work with a bunch of group of people that I enjoy every day working with. So let's go, uh, let's get started here. This is a 5S Delta, four wire Delta C high. Okay, and if you can see my screen here, uh, the service type file that I have selected is the three phase four wire Delta C high. But the key to the service type file is actually the 3PC. So I'm actually using uh, three uh, current uh, measurements on the primary side of it. So let's get, let's get going here. Let me go out and select it here. So we're going to select. I've already got all of this stuff set up for you guys. All right, we're going to do an integrated site test. All right, so, you know, of course, the thing what we're doing here is we have selected the KT, which is 1.0. The test revs are three, and we're looking to test uh, watt hours. Okay, now <clears throat> this is the uh, wiring diagram that Chris had mentioned a little bit earlier. So pay close attention to that. You could either double wrap or you could either single wrap here on this diagram. But of course, what I have chose to do is I have, I'm using the SR752 probes. So I've got three PCs. So the red, yellow, and blue dots is where I have placed my probes. All right, so that's what my vectors look like there. So again, this is a 120 volt and uh, the what we call a wild leg, C high, 208. And of course, we've summed on A and B. So, you know, I'm looking at 4.385 amps. So what kind, of, what kind of service would someone use for this? Why would they use this particular service? Um, what, mainly you see these on top of machine shops. Um, different customers that want that 208 wild leg. And I've seen other applications to where they're actually um, using that wild leg for other things. So of course, okay, our meter registration is 99.9676. So I'll go to next test. Would be like motor loads or maybe motor loads. 208 lighting, lighting yeah. Um, okay, so there's our single line diagram there. And again, I've rigged this up to actually make this work. So I wish you guys could see actually what I've got going on here as far as my CTs. Okay, so let's perform the test, CT test here. All right, so. Um, now remember, we're summing the primary amps and summing the secondary amps. 
And so, of course, on C phase, um, that's the 208 wild leg. So we've got 51 amps and two, 51 primary amps and two amps on the uh, uh, secondary, secondary side. So that's pretty much uh, pass there. Um, again, these deltas are kind of complex. Um, if you guys are out in the field and you need help, please call me. Um, I'm always available. Um, <clears throat> and uh, if not, uh, I notice a lot of guys nowadays, they're texting a little bit more. So um, you're more than welcome to text. Normally, if I'm on the phone, if you shoot me a text, I can answer the text while I'm talking on the phone. So anyway, I hope this helps. Um, again, if you guys need anything, give me a shout. I'm Ray. And again, I'm glad to talk to y'all. All right, so, so far we've gone over a 6S Z coil Y. We just went over a very, very unique uh, four wire delta using a two element meter. And lastly, we're gonna talk about um, the most common non-Blundell meter in the world, and that is a 2S meter. The, um, this is typically used in residential situations, obviously, uh, lighting, Small lighting loads, uh, I've seen it on ballparks, sometimes use a 2S, or if the CT rated, they use a 4S if it's a little bit higher. Um, but uh, the way we calculate it is, again, it's a violation of, of Blondell's theorem because we only have one potential. We have to sum our two potentials, which is VAB, to get that 240 volts coming into the meter. Um, so that's why it's, it doesn't meet uh, Blondell's theorem. But what makes uh, an interesting application for this is um, this is something that meter guys are running across more and more as, um, as they're seeing the popularity of, of green power and renewable energy. Um, community centers or maybe a park, um, they may uh, put you know, solar panels on their, on their system to try to reduce the, uh, the overall cost of use of their, of their facility. And so this is something you may run across. It's a photovoltaic system, or sometimes I'll call it a PV system, where it's a, a bank of solar panels um, and an inverter. And so the inverter actually uh, converts the um, DC power that's, uh, com uh, com that's uh, created from the solar panel and either move it to a uh, battery storage or, or, or pump it directly through to the, uh, to the site and uh, converts that to AC power so our 2S meter can, can uh, comply. And so the example I've shown here is uh, this is a sample inverter. I think this was in, up in Vermont, I believe, um, where the guy has the, this is a park, I believe, a park and um, they had this, this set up in a metering with a 2S meter. And actually we have this exact same 2S meter we're gonna be testing. Uh, next slide. The, uh, so the interesting thing about, the, uh, about a PV system is that it's, you must have a metering system that's, that's bi-directional. So when you are consuming power, and I'm talking about from the customer's point of view, when they're consuming power and we do a meter test on it, our values are always expressed as positive watts or positive energy because the power factor is positive. Now, when, the, when it's in bi-directional, where it's in, it's in reverse, or we call that delivered, I'm sorry, received, the uh, generation is going back to the grid. And so when we run a meter test, the registration values will look negative. So it'd be like a negative 100% because our power factor is negative. Because remember, our phase shift is 180 degrees out of phase because we are pushing it back to the grid, not consuming it. And so your meter should have the ability to uh, do both received and delivered energy. And you'll notice on the, uh, the meter worm that a triangle will either go to the left if it is in receive mode or to the right if it's in delivered mode. And so we're, we're first going to run a test on in delivered mode, which is positive. And then after that, we'll run a test in receive mode, which will be negative. Take it away, Jones. Okay. So you can see here on the screen, I've got up in the upper right hand corner, we've got a site we call 2S. So we always know what site we're on, remember? So here are the different functions we can form. This is the menu for the 2S site. So off of this, I'm going to choose uh, number two. 
which is an integrated side test. And uh, since the pulses are going, going to be coming at us pretty good, I'm not going to change this. But if you've uh, worked with me in the field before, you know I normally change that to 30 seconds in three revs. Because remember, it's whichever the machine sees first. So if you don't put anything in there in the time, it's going to go three revs before it completes the test. If you put a time and a number of revs, it's whichever it completes first. Okay? So I'm just going to leave it like this. There's our color diagram. There are vectors. They look good. So we will continue. Start test. So it doesn't take long when it's uh, when you have one. <laughs> your case of age. So we've run through our three pulses. You can see test complete. It falls within what we consider pass or fail. So we would consider this meter good for that utility company. It falls within their parameters or pass or fail. So we would say this one would be good and go on. But now Chris is going to throw me a curveball. Okay, cool. So let's go to the vectors first. So we noticed, right, that we've got a switch here because my my B phase current was over here, wasn't it? So now it's going over here. So clearly we've got an issue. I can see my power factor is negative. Remember, my power factor goes negative when I have polarity reversal. So we're going to go ahead and hit, let's go back up here to previous, and we will run the test. So everybody on the chat room and everybody out there, what do we think is going to happen now? What's my registration going to look like? Is it going to be any different than the one I just ran? Should be. negative right so this is similar to we're going to cover this in a future webinar if you've gone out to a big solar farm and you've got three phase and you want to do a phantom load test we're going to talk about this you set up a phantom load test right you can send it for received or delivered and if I actually am at, out at a, a solar farm and I'm doing testing I wouldn't want to change it to received on my phantom load tests so that this wouldn't come out negative on my registration okay so right now it is seeing this meter saying that I am not, I'm not getting power delivered to me. I'm uh, receiving power, right? Cool. And we just really appreciate you guys. Uh, the support that we've got in this has been uh, a little surprising in a very pleasant way. Um, so if there's anything, uh, like I said, all of these you're seeing today and the next few are going to be uh, stuff that you guys have sent into us, suggestions from you guys. So um, so that's really important to us. Um, so we want to show stuff that you've seen. We just got some 3S uh, requests from someone, so we're going to put those in next week. So um, we just really appreciate uh, not only the attention you're giving us uh, by watching these things and taking time out of your busy day, but these suggestions for us to show you some stuff. Because trust me, you're not the only one. <laughs> okay? So, um, so I'm going to sign this out with a little prayer. Pray us out. <clears throat> Praise Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day for a, a chance for us to, to get better at our craft. And Father, I just uh, lift up these men that I work with here. I hope they understand. I realize they're doing all the heavy lifting, and I just appreciate them. And I lift up our, our company right now, of course, and uh, I lift up this country. We're at a, not only we're starting to see some light at the end of the tunnel, but what are we going to do after this? So we're all going to still need to be vigilant and aware and, and conduct ourselves responsibly out there in public to try and help this thing get even farther down the line. So Father, thank you so much for having your hand on us for watching over us. And Father, we just thank you so much for your son. Because if he hadn't died on the cross, I couldn't even pray right now. 
So all of these things I say and ask according to the one who paid it all, my brother Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks, Jaquilla. <laughs>